Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron and this is the Law of Attraction Epilogue Series, Episode 11. In today's video, we're going to have a little bit of fun by looking at one of my favorite athletes who I believe is a truly inspiring figure and a modern day Law of Attraction master. None other than the notorious Conor McGregor. Most of my viewers probably don't know this about me, but I am a huge fan of mixed martial arts. I've been following the UFC religiously since I was about 15 years old, and so I've seen the rise and fall of just about every star the sport has to offer. But about five or six years ago, a certain guy began to stand out more than anyone else ever had before. Something about this guy just caught my eye and made me go, damn, this dude gets it. He just had that it factor. You could see it in the way he walks, the way he talks, the way he would carry himself, in the weigh-ins, the interviews, the stare-downs. This Conor McGregor guy was exploding with confidence. And once his meteoric rise began, it became obvious to me that this guy was also a Law of Attraction master. And look, before we go any further, I'll be totally honest, okay? Yes, I'm a Conor McGregor fanboy, alright? Fight me. Just kidding, I love you. But I'm not a fanboy for the reasons you might think. I became a big fan of Connors because I like to learn from inspiring people, and Conor McGregor is at the very top of that list for me. But it wasn't because of his impressive victories or knockout predictions or world titles, but because of his ability to create the realities that he predicted time and time again before our very eyes. That is why I became a fan. Now, I'm well aware of the fact that Conor McGregor has had some character issues. Breaking news, Conor McGregor caught on video. Grab a steel dolly. Oh. That's all right. Hey, 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 the Conor. Conor, don't throw those. Yeah, Conor. Conor. But let's be honest. If you went from being a plumber's assistant to the most famous athlete on earth with over a hundred million dollars in your bank account, then you might make some dumb decisions too. But in any case, whether you like Conor McGregor or not, we can at least all agree that his rise to fame was extremely inspiring to watch. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what Conor McGregor was able to accomplish in his career by using his own secret three-step law of attraction formula that helped create him into the megastar he is today. Conor McGregor was raised in a low-income family in Dublin, Ireland. He grew up working as a plumber's assistant while training in mixed martial arts and knew he wanted to put his country on the map in the UFC one day by being the first professional Irish fighter. One day as a teenager, Conor's sister gave him a book called The Secret. So my, my sister, when I was a young kid at around 15 years of age, unsure where I was going, came to me with, with a book, The Secret, and uh, preaching the law of attraction. Yeah. I wasn't interested. I was almost laughing at it. But then I, she kept on me with it, and I eventually watched uh, a movie on it uh, and, and read some books on it. And then it started to resonate with me, like to, to, to keep positive and have belief in where you're going. And, and, and you're able to, you can almost visually create your entire world. No, not almost, you actually can. Yes. You can. Connor's meteoric rise in the UFC was nothing short of spectacular. He burst onto the scene boasting that he would knock out his opponents in the first round. And unlike most fighters, he did everything he said he would, finishing his opponents with dazzling technique and devastating power. Connor's rise to stardom in the UFC quickly mobilized the entire country of Ireland, and before you knew it, Conor McGregor's fans were flying from Ireland to see him fight and selling out entire arenas in record numbers. Conor was simply in a different class psychologically than any of his opponents, and he took full advantage of that fact by waging mental warfare against his opponents to make sure that they knew they had no chance of beating him. Even the way he walks into the octagon is a psychological strategy to show his opponents how much better he's handling the pressure of the moment than they are. Conor's first world title came against the legendary Jose Aldo of Brazil. Aldo had owned the featherweight division for six years and was undefeated in 18 straight fights. 
Connor began his defeat of Jose Aldo through mental warfare, confidently predicting an easy knockout inside the first round. I said his right hand would get him into trouble, it's the shot I predicted. I said he'd overload on his right hand, I said I'd slip, I said I'd bang the left hook. Uh, left hook. And to the shock of the entire MMA world, he did just that. Conor Gregor, black trunks for the champion, Jose Aldo Jr. Connor relaxed, smiling. Oh! How do you do that? How I do you mean, predict these if things? you can see it here, and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. So I see these shots, I see these sequences, and I don't shy away from them. A lot of times people believe in certain things, but they keep to themselves. They don't put it out there. If you truly believe in it, if you become vocal with it, you are creating that law of attraction and it will <clears throat> become reality. After his first world title, Connor moved up two weight classes to fight the infamous Nate Diaz, by far the biggest opponent he had ever faced. Connor was in control of the fight early, but found himself submitting to Nate Diaz in a rear naked choke in the third round. But rather than use the excuse that he had moved up two weight classes to fight a much bigger opponent, Connor humbly accepted his defeat and immediately called for a rematch. The whole MMA community, even Connor's own coaches, suggested that Nate Diaz should come down to 155 for the rematch. But in typical Conor McGregor fashion, his unshakable self-confidence would have none of it. How did this rematch come about, Dana? He was obsessed. Obsessed <laughs> with fighting Nate Diaz again. He wants to fight at 170. Even his coach tried to get him to get off this rematch and off the 170-pound fight, but it's what he wanted. He wants this Nate Diaz fight. We'll give it to him. We can either run from adversity or we can face our adversity head-on and conquer it. And that's what I plan to do. And five months later, he and Nate Diaz squared off again. After one of the most brutal and entertaining five-round fights in UFC history, Conor McGregor was declared the winner by majority decision. Following that, Conor captured his second world title against the dangerous Eddie Alvarez, who Conor also predicted he would knock out in the first round. And this time, no one was surprised when he did. Conor made Alvarez look silly and became the first MMA athlete to ever hold two championship belts in different weight classes simultaneously. Conor's stardom began to reach supersonic levels. Rumors began that Conor wanted to set up a super fight against Floyd Mayweather, perhaps the greatest professional boxer of all time. This was widely mocked and criticized by sport pundits everywhere, but McGregor did not back down. I'm gonna stop Floyd, you're all gonna fight. When are you gonna have? You're all gonna eat your wounds. The whole world is gonna eat your wounds. When are you gonna have? Again, comes, don't worry about it. You'll hear about it. To everyone's surprise, Floyd wound up agreeing to the fight, but only if he was to be paid at least $100 million, while Connor would get only 10 to 15 million. Again, Connor believed in his worth and would have none of it. The super fight of the century was agreed upon, and Connor, while getting paid less than Floyd, was still set up to make over $100 million, just as he stated. Floyd and Connor did a worldwide tour to promote the fight, selling out entire stadiums which were jam packed with fans of McGregor. In the meantime, Connor also started his own personal clothing line, August McGregor, and his own personal whiskey brand, Proper 12 which dominated the Irish whiskey market and earned McGregor another $100 million after its first 12 months of business. Hardly anyone gave Conor a chance to even land a single punch, let alone win any rounds. So Conor, as the sports media saw it, stood absolutely no chance. Yet Conor's self-confidence did not waver. He predicted a knockout of Floyd Mayweather within the first five rounds. And although his knockout prediction did not come true this time, Connor shocked the entire world by winning the first three rounds of the fight and landing numerous shots on Floyd Mayweather that nobody thought was possible. Yet again, Connor had exceeded everyone's expectations, except his own. So I don't say any of this just to hype up Connor McGregor, but to demonstrate the incredible power of self-belief. Connor showed all of us what is actually possible if we can learn to truly believe in ourselves and the power that all of us have to dictate our own destiny. And just recently, Connor did an interview with Tony Robbins 
where he shared his personal secrets of how he uses the law of attraction to create his reality. And I think we can all learn a lot from what he shared. So to condense things for you, I'm going to give you the three powerful principles that Connor used to climb to the top of the mountain and manifest his dreams. So without further ado, here is Connor McGregor's secret three-step law of attraction formula. And the first principle is practice. Practice visualization. I know it might sound simple, but it might actually be the most important step. Because Connor would have never had the self-belief to confidently claim he would knock out a professional world champion athlete in the first round if he had not practiced visualizing and manifesting smaller things first. Connor talks about the importance of practicing visualization as often as possible. Because just like training a muscle, you have to train your mind to become focused and powerful. And from a very young age, that's exactly what Connor started doing. I practice it. I used to drive, we used to drive, um, my girlfriend, we used to drive to a food place in like a shopping mall in Ireland. And it was a very busy shopping mall. And I'd all, like, I would practice like little parts of it. Like when, when we were driving into the shopping mall, the car park, I would always visualize that the car park space right at the front door would be yeah. empty for me, yeah. waiting for us to pull up. Yeah. And sometimes I'd get it and sometimes I wouldn't get it. You know, but when I, when I got it, I'd celebrate it like I just won my double world title. You know, and I kept building on that and, and, and I got better at it. And, and it became, I became so damn good at it that I was able to go into bouts against undefeated fighters for people with insane fighting legacies. And I was able to go in front of the world and tell the world, I'm going to knock this man out with this exact shot at this exact time. And I done it back to back to back. The second principle is tell everyone. Now, this is something we saw Connor do from the beginning of his career. But from a manifestation standpoint, it's a really smart strategy. If you truly believe you can accomplish something, then you can actually use other people to help you manifest it faster. Whenever we hear someone say something repeatedly with self-confidence, then a part of us starts to believe them. And then those people will actually begin to visualize it for you. And this is exactly what we saw with Connor's career. The whole world began to believe him when he said he would knock someone out in the first round. And then big shocker, that's exactly what happened. And, and so you'd visualize it, you'd I see it, you'd it, feel it, you'd tell everybody. I tell everyone. I think that's a very important yeah, thing. Yes. It's easy for us to keep it all in, but you're not. You're, not, you're not on the line then. Tell you know, us I about was just what? a young kid with a dream and a belief in himself. And for many times I was laughed at and not believed in. But you know what? Nothing external can, can, can defeat the internal. The only yes. thing that can take someone down or break you down is internal. And the third and final principle is what Connor calls all in. Meaning that if you want to manifest something truly great, then you have to be 100% all in. And I know that sounds simple, but hardly anyone actually does it. Manifestation is all about making the internal greater than the external. Meaning that your self-belief cannot be shaken by what happens outside of you. And this is a foundational principle in the law of attraction. You must cultivate such an energy of self-belief that even when your external circumstances seem to doubt it, internally you are not moved. It's important to remember that the law of attraction is not magic. It is all based upon probability. Quantum mechanics shows us that the universe is basically a field of probability. So all we are actually doing with our self-belief is manipulating probabilities. So even though Connor believes in himself completely, he still trains his ass off to be the best fighter possible. So no matter how much self-belief Connor may have, or how much visualization he's practiced, he's never gonna beat someone who trains how to fight professionally if he can barely throw a punch or defend a takedown. And this is true for any endeavor in life. This is why being all in is extremely important. Because if you want something, but you're not really willing to work hard for it, then how bad do you actually want it? The universe sees all of these things, and it's going to reward someone who's more all in than you are. So make sure that you are as all in as you can possibly be. 
All in is a term I like to use in my ventures. All in. We've got to be all in on our ventures. Obviously, soccer is huge in, in, in Ireland and the UK. Yeah. And it was my first love, most certainly. I used to sneak out of the house late at night and there used to be a little grass patch by my home. And I would play, I'd take the football out and play on the grass patch on my own. And I would kick the ball against the wall. And when I kicked the ball against the wall, I would imagine it was a, a goal, the goal yeah. net. Yeah. And I scored a goal and I would run off and I would visualize a screaming arena cheering me on. The only yes. thing that can take someone down or break you down is internal. Nothing external is strong enough. It's just about making sure your internal dialogue and your internal belief in yourself is strong enough that it can withstand the external. The external is there. You've got to accept it. You've got to embrace it. You've got to understand it and be aware of it. But don't let it seep into, into your internal dialogue. And it's a daily, daily occurrence not to let that external infiltrate, infiltrate my internal. Being all in means you live it, you sleep it, you breathe it, you embody it. You make your internal stronger than your external. Because again, law of attraction is not magic, it's probability. And by being all in, you are tilting the odds heavily in your favor. So there you have it. Practice repeatedly, tell everyone, and be all in. But it's important to remember that just because you know these principles now does not mean you're automatically going to be the next Conor McGregor. It's one thing to know these principles, but it's another thing entirely to actually live them. And nothing you know will ever actually help you until you put it into practice. But if you can embody these principles, then as Conor McGregor showed all of us, the sky is the limit. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.